Hi, this is Michael. Um, in this session, I'm going to show you the new email reporting widget version 3.0. And um, the main reason why it's out there or why I created it was to add support for subscription versions of Capturate, uh, Adobe Capturate 6.1 and Adobe Capturate 7. Um, the widget itself hasn't changed that much, um, but before. Uh, you need to you needed to use two separate widgets if you wanted to to uh, email the results and you wanted to capture question data. Uh, in this new version, it's all combined into one widget, uh, which will make it more easy for you as a developer to use it in your projects. So um, we're going to open up Captivate. Let's see Captivate Seven here, um, and we'll try and insert the widget in the project so you can see what type of changes we have made in this version. So just started a blank project. Doesn't really matter what kind of project you're using, but let's see. And we'll say insert widget, and I placed it on my desktop for easy access. So this is the uh, the widget properties. Um, this widget will work with PHP and ASP scripts. So PHP is basically, or is normally what you see on a, a web server if you use a web hosting company like Go GoDaddy or InMotion Hosting or iPage or uh, just a guess is that 90% of all web servers actually are capable of running PHP. Um, ASP is uh, the Microsoft equivalent uh, of PHP so for this you would need a Microsoft IIS server uh, in order to actually make the widgets in the mail. Um, the PHP version is pretty much plug and play um, where the ASP version is much, much more complicated. Um, the widget uh, and all the things you need to do in Capturate are exactly the same, um, but in order to make ASP actually send emails, you would need to go into some server configurations and do some web config files, etc. So unless you are uh, familiar with ASP or know someone who can help you with ASP problems, then be, uh, be careful about purchasing this widget if you don't know what you're doing. So we'll switch it to PHP, that's the, the basic one. Um, we have the ability to define a custom script location. Uh, it's not mandatory, so the default behavior of the widget is that it looks in the same directory where the captured SWF file resides. Uh, that's the default behavior, and that will work for 90% of all the people using the widget. However, in some cases, um, if you're using uh, uh, an LMS or if you're loading the Captivate project into some kind of iPage stuff, iframe stuff, or uh, uh, one of those fancy jQuery uh, players, um, that will actually change some internal paths and the widget won't be able to find the, the script that it needs to use to send the email. Um, in that case, you would be able to define a fully qualified URL uh, to, to your uh, where you place the script and uh, it would still be able to pick it up from there. So let's see, just like that. Nope. Um, another thing you could do with the custom script location is that if you use this widget for a lot of projects, um, you could simply keep your script in one location at all times. Um, that means you wouldn't have to upload uh, the, the sendmail PHP file or sendmail ASPX file every time you do a new project. Just reference where you have it on your server. It is possible to to execute the Captivate project, I mean play the Captivate project from one server and reference the script file on another server or another domain. Um, but if you're doing that you need to set up some cross-domain policies. We'll get back to that in a, in a later vid vid video. Sorry. Uh, we'll just delete this again. Alright, so the receiver email field is where you enter the email address that will be receiving the notification that a user has completed a course. Um, so let's just say that would be course admin at my domain dot com. The sender email is what the, the email address that the email from the widget will appear to originate from. So we'll just say support at cpguru.com. So this email will be sent to course admin at my domain from support at cpguru.com. And then we have a subject, so my subject. This is pretty straightforward, um, nothing fancy about this. 
The widget allows you to automatically send a copy of the email to the student. Uh, in that case, you will need to define the student's email in a variable called v underscore email. Um, this variable needs to be created in Captivate and you'll need to assign the value or a value to this so the widget can actually pick up the email and send it to them as well. We'll talk a little bit later about that as well. You have the ability to transfer custom variables. So the widget, if you enable this, it will pick up anything stored in variables named v underscore custom1 and until v underscore custom30. So essentially you have 30 custom variables which you can have the widget send with you, send in the email as well. Um, that could be anything if you if you make like branch navigation and want to make sure that what path the user chose and you are kind of figuring that out through variables you would be able to assign the variables to these variables v custom 1 to 30 and the widget would actually send that as well you can record and transfer question data so what this means is that when the user answers a question you would get some data from each question so you would know if the, did the user answered the question correctly did the user skip the question what is the question what are the answer options uh, and which answer did the user give to the question you have the ability to clean quiz results on retake so if if you have a quiz that allows several retakes um, what the widget will do on its default behavior is that it will just append the results to the email so you would kind of get double points and you would get all the answers that the student has made to the uh, to the quiz in all their attempts um, this can be useful in many cases but in some cases you just want to have the latest uh, result so clean res quiz results on retake will take care of that and then there's a new one here I'm not using a quiz results line so in probably 90% of all the Captivate projects uh, with quizzes, you're going to use the standard quiz results slide. Some people choose not to use it, and if you're one of those people, you would select this. Uh, th basically, the widget it, it it looks for that quiz results slide because it knows when the quiz results slide is being displayed. That means that the user has finished taking the quiz, and then it will send the email but if you're not using the quiz results slide then the widget needs to look for something entirely different um, and it's a bit more resource demanding etc so that's why you can select it only if you're not using a quiz results slide finally we have a little debug option down here and this is essentially if, if you're having any problems with the widget um, and you can't get it to work or something like that I'll be asking you to all right publish a project enable the debug uh, option and I'm going to send you a third party program that will allow you to debug uh, oh sorry that will kind of keep a debug log of everything that's happening in your project and everything that the widget sees and any errors that the widget might throw at you so this is not something you want to enable at all times you only want to enable it if you've been in touch with me uh, for a specific problem and I asked you to to do it so now we actually have the the uh, widget set up as it should be in Captivate and this new widget the new version version 3.0 you, you just drop it on your first slide start it at zero seconds and let it display for yeah, two and a half three seconds um, the widget will be invisible when uh, to the user so so they can't see that this is just so you know where it's at and you can move it around and easily see all right that's the email reporting widget I got in here so what we want to do is we want to add some quiz questions and we'll just take one of each I guess it doesn't work with rating scales like it or surveys so you can't use that it, it will work with random questions but I'm not going to set it up here so let's just create a bunch of questions here and um, let's make it a bit smaller you don't really have to do anything at all on the questions there's one or two things you need to pay a lot of attention to if you're using fill in the blank 
or you're using short answers, you need to have a correct entry reply here. If you don't, then the widget will break. Because if you don't enter a correct entry, a correct response uh, for, for the widget to actually find, uh, Capture it doesn't create anything here uh, by default. So when it kind of cycles through your project to find out what the user answered and what the correct answers are, it will break it once it gets this. So remember, fill in the blanks and short answers always need to have a correct entry associated with it. I think in the fill in the blank it's actually it has something, doesn't it? Let's see. Yeah, it has the blank value. So, so in here you are actually covered. But the fill the the short answer question doesn't have it doesn't have any default uh, answer. So keep that in mind. That's it. That's all we need to do to set up the widget. So we'll just publish this project, and we'll just choose to publish it to our desktop, and put it in a folder, and say publish. There we go. We don't want to view it. So we'll go to the desktop here. And in here we have the standard files that you see whenever you publish a CapTech project. Um, nothing fancy about that. Now what we need to do, and this is extremely important, is we need to find the script file that the widget uses. So in the zip file, the deployment file that you downloaded, you'll find a number of folders. You'll find a folder with help documentation. This is something you should read, definitely. Um, you'll find a folder with the widgets. So there's a widget for Capture 5 and 5.5, and there's a widget for Capture 6 and 7. If we go to the scripts, you'll find two folders. There's an ASP script and there's a PHP script. So we're using the PHP one right now, so we're going to go in here, and we're going to copy the sendmail script and paste it into our folder where we published it. So the next thing is actually just uploading this project. Um, I'm going to pause and do that in a, s in a separate video. But essentially, this is what you need to do whenever you're using the email reporting widget in a Capture project. So we put in the widget, widget we fill in the properties, all the stuff we need to know. Uh, and, then that and that we want the widget to send us, and we publish it, copy the script file to the published directory, and upload the project. So, in the next video, we're going to upload the project. Bye for now.